Water Transport Water transport is the cheapest means of transport and is therefore suitable for carrying heavy and bulky materials. It is a fuel-efficient and eco-friendly mode of transport. According to one estimate the construction of each kilometer of railway and road needs an investment of around 1 crores whereas only 0.10 crores is required to develop same length of waterways. The salient features of India's shipping policy are the promotion of national shipping to increase self-reliance in the carriage of the country's overseas trade and protection of stakeholders. Interest In Exim Trade National shipping makes significant contribution to the foreign exchange earnings of the country. Their development is faster and maintenance cost is much lower. Water transport in India has been divided into 1. Inland waterways 2. Seaways Inland waterways Inland waterways refer to using inland water bodies like rivers, canals, backwaters, creeks etc. for transporting goods and people from one place to another. Inland Waterways Authority of India was set up in 1986 for the development, maintenance and regulation of national waterways in the country. In other to increase the significance of inland waterways and to improve their efficiency, the government has identified important waterways and designated them as National Waterways of India. National Waterway No. 1 NW1, the Ganga, North India. The Ganga Bhagirathi Hooghly River system connecting Haldia Kolkata, Calcutta, Faraka, Munga, Patna, Varanasi, Allahabad is navigable by mechanized boats up to Pitna and by ordinary boats up to Haridwar. The NW1 stretches to more than 1,620 kilometers of potentially navigable waterways. Night navigational facilities are in the process of implementation. National Waterway No. 2, NW2, Dash the Brahmaputra, Northeast India. The river Brahmaputra connecting Dhabri Pandu. Guwahati Tezpur Nimati Dabruga Sadi is stretching to about 891 km was declared a national waterway in 1988. Provisions for 2 meter depth channels, night navigational facilities are under consideration. An inland water transport transit and trade protocol exists between India and Bangladesh. The NW2 connects the northeast region with Calcutta and Haldia ports through Bangladesh and Sundarbans waterways. National Waterway No. 3, NW3, Dash the West Coast Canal, Southwest India. The West Coast Canal located in God's own country, Kerala runs from Kollam to Kottapuram and was declared a national waterway in 1993. The NW3 is one of the most navigable and tourism potential area in India and has much to offer to the potential tourist. National Waterway 4, NW4 The Kekanada Pujucheri stretch of canals and the Kaluvali tank. Badra Ilam, Rajamandri stretch of river Godavari and Wazirabad, Vijayawada stretch of river Krishna has been declared as National Waterways No. 4. National Waterway 5, NW5. The Talchudamra stretch of river Brahmani, Jenkarli, Chabesha stretch of East Coast Canal. Chabesha Damris stretch of Matai River and Mangalgadi Paradip stretch of Mohanadi. Delta Rivers has been declared as National Waterway No. 5. Factors affecting inland waterways 1. 
Diversion of river water for irrigation canals has reduced the flow of water and declined the navigation capacity of the rivers. 2. The presence of waterfalls, cataracts and sharp bends hinders the development of waterways. 3. Silting of riverbed reduces the depth of water and creates problem for navigation. 4. Lack of funds. The government is promoting inland water transport in the form of interest subsidies and inducing private investment. For promoting the use of this mode by private operators, they are encouraged to use central inland water transport corporation vessels free of higher charges. Inland water transport has a good potential to be exploited and efforts should be made in this direction. Passenger transport should be encouraged. Intermodal connections with shipping, railways and roadways can improve the performance of inland water transport. For overall development of IWT sector in the country it is necessary that national waterways as well as other waterways are developed side by side. A large number of smaller rivers from tributaries of national waterways rivers if developed with IWT infrastructure, many of these smaller rivers can become suitable for navigation by smaller, medium-sized inland vessels and can act as feeder routes to the main waterways. While the development and regulation of national waterways is the responsibility of central government. IY, the respective state governments should develop other waterways. However, due to fund constraint, it has not been possible for the states to provide adequate funds for IWT development. Therefore, to encourage the states for IWT development, there was a Central A Sponsored Scheme, CSS, for IWT sector. Under the CSS, 100% grant is provided for the projects of northeastern states including Sikkim and 90% grant to other states. The Planning Commission has discontinued the scheme for areas other than northeast region from the year 2007-08. The scheme has been continued for the northeastern regional and classified as a central sector scheme. Seaways. Shipping plays an important role in the transport sector of India's economy. Almost 98% of India's overseas trade in terms of volume is moved by sea. Coal and petroleum products constitute the bulk of the cargo. India has a vast coastline of about 7,516 kilometers and over 2 million square kilometers of exclusive economic zone. The entire coastline is studded with 12 major and 185 minor ports. India has the largest merchant shipping fleet among the developing countries and ranks 20th amongst the countries with the largest cargo carrying fleet with 8.83 million GT. Major seaports in India 1. Kandla. It is a tidal port located at the eastern end of Gulf of Kuk about 48 kilometers away from Budge. It has been developed after independence to relieve congestion on Mumbai port and to compensate for the loss of Karachi port to Pakistan after partition. It is a port with natural sheltered harbor in Kandla Creek. Leather, petroleum products, chemicals, salt, cement, cotton and silk textile, edible oils are main items of export. Crude oil, good quality coffee, potash, and machines are main items of import. 2. Mumbai. It is situated on Salset Island on the western coast. It is a natural harbour and the largest port of India handling about one-fifth of India's foreign trade. Oil seeds, groundnut, raw leather and leather wares, tobacco, 
Cotton textile and engineering goods are the main items of exports. High quality cotton, chemicals and chemical fertilizer, petroleum, machineries and paper are main import items. It handles foreign trade with Western and East African countries and Gulf countries. Opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 brought it much closer to the European countries. 3. Jawaharlal Airport. It has been built at Nhava Sheva Island across the Elephant Caves, about 10 kilometers from Mumbai. Main objective is to relieve the pressure on the Mumbai port. It is equipped with most modern facilities having mechanized container berth for handling dry bulk cargo and service berth etc. It is the largest man-made and most modernized port of India. It handles 55 to 60 percent of the country's containerized cargo. 4. Maumagao. It is a natural port located at the entrance of Zuvari Estuary in Goa. It handles the export of iron ore from Goa. Iron ore, manganese, coconut, coffee, cotton, etc. are the main items of export. Petroleum, fertilizer, chemicals, machines and food grains are the main import items. 5. New Mangalore. Located at the southern tip of Karnataka coast north of Gulpa River. Iron ore, tea, rice, cashew nut, granite, coffee, rubber, fruits and fishes are the main export items. Fertilizer, edible oils, petroleum and machines are import items. It has facilities for export of iron ore from Qudrimak mines. It is well connected through broad gauge rail lines and NH-17 with Mumbai and Kanyakumari. The ship beyond 6,000 tons cannot stay here. 6. Koki. A natural harbour on the western coast of Kerala, in Vembanad Lake, 320 km north of Kanyakumari. It is located close to Suez Colombo Sea Route. The port has sheltered Backwater Bay. This port handles 5% of the total trade. Tea, coffee, copper, rubber, rice, sea products and spices are main export items whereas coal, iron and steel, zinc, petrol, fertilizers, cotton, wheat, rice and bauxite are main import items. 7. Tutikarin. It is an artificial deep sea harbour in Tamil Nadu, north of Adam Bridge and east of Sri Lanka. Its main purpose is to carry on trade with Sri Lanka as it is very near to that country. Spices, tea, salt, sugar, copper, cotton textile, leather and banana are main export items whereas coal. Fertilizer and machines are main import items. 8. Chennai. It is the oldest artificial port on the eastern coast of India. At a time 16 ships can stay in this artificial harbour. Tamil Nadu, eastern Karnataka and southern Andhra Pradesh fall under its hinterland. Cotton and silks textile, coffee. Fertilizer, rubber, tobacco, oil seeds, rice, leather and fishes are main export items. Coal, petroleum, paper, sugar, vehicles, medicines, machines and chemicals are main import items. Due to lesser depth near coast, it is ill suited for large ships. 9. Inno Recently developed to reduce pressure of traffic on Chennai port. It is located slightly north of Chennai on T.N. coast. It is country's first corporate port. The major items of traffic are coal, iron ore, petroleum, chemicals, etc. 10. 
Vishakapatnam. It is the deepest landlocked and protected port at the coast of Andhra Pradesh. Manganese, spices, wood, coal and iron are our main export items. Steel, oil, coal, machines and luxury items are the main imports. An outer harbour has been developed to handle the export of iron ore. Iron ore from Bay Aladla mines is exported to Japan from this port. It also has shipbuilding and ship repairing industry. 11. Paradeep. It is a deep water and all weather port on Orissi coast in Mohanadi Delta region. This port has been developed with a view to export raw materials mainly iron ore to Japan. Iron ore, chromites, fishes, manganese are main items of export whereas chemical, fertilizer potash and food grains are main import items. It is being developed as a free port where iron steel industry in proposed to be established. 12. Kolkata Holdia. It is a river Rhine port located on the west bank of the Hooghly River. Tea, sugar, jute, iron and steel goods, coal, textiles, oil seeds, leather, mica and manganese are main items of export. Paper, petrol, fertilizers, chemical goods, rubber, machines medicine are main import items. It handles goods coming from Southeast Asian countries, Australia, and New Zealand. It is called Gateway to Eastern India. Haldia Port has recently been developed on the confluence of rivers Hooghly and Haldi, about 105 kilometers downstream from Kolkata. Its main purpose is to release congestion at Kolkata. Passenger Ferry Service Between India and Sri Lanka Ferry service has been resumed between Sri Lanka and India after being halted for more than 25 years because of the island's civil war. The ferry will carry the passengers from both the countries in economical and efficient. This will enhance the relations between two countries both economically and culturally as tourist flow will increase. The ferry service will connect Tutikaran port in India and Colombo in Sri Lanka. Problems and Solutions The Indian water transport system is confronted with problems as inadequacy of tonnage capacity, shortage of container fleet, overaged vessels resulting into high operational costs, stiff competition from foreign shipping companies, congestion at the major ports and inadequate infrastructural support like ship repair facility, dry docking, cargo handling and lack of proper coordination in entire logistics chain. In the eighth plan the basic thrusts were towards the replacement of aged and uneconomic ships diversification of fleet through the acquisition of container ships and specialized containers, achievement of self-sufficiency in tankers and improvement of infrastructural facilities at the port. Requirement is to make the ports more autonomous and reduce existing legal formalities. Autonomous ports can raise resources from the primary market by way of equity. In order to improve efficiency productivity and quality of services as well as to bring in competitiveness in port services, the port sector has been thrown open to private sector participation. The Major Port Trust Act, 1963 permits private sector participation in major ports invites foreign direct investment. FDI, up to 100% under the automatic route is permitted for construction and maintenance of ports and harbors. Private sector participation has been allowed in a variety of port services which includes construction and operation of terminals, warehousing, storage facility, dry docking and ship repair facilities.
Pipeline Pipelines are the most convenient mode of transporting liquids and gases over long distances. Even solids can also be transported by pipelines after converting them into slurry. The country had a network of about 5,035 kilometers long pipelines in 1980 which has increased to over 7,000 kilometers now. India is not self-sufficient in crude oil and petroleum-based products. Hence every year it has to import around 70% of these products from abroad. While giant tanker ships import it from foreign country but to transport the crude to refineries and petroleum products from refinery to consumer markets needs widespread branches of pipelines. India has developed an indigenous network of pipeline for easy and economical transfer of oil from one place to another. Advantages of Pipeline a. They are ideally suited to transport the liquid and gases. B. They can be laid over difficult terrain as well as underwater. C. It involves very low energy consumption. D. Their operation and maintenance cost is low. E. They are safe, accident-free and environmental friendly. Disadvantages of Pipeline A. It is not flexible that is it can be used only for a few fixed points. B. Its capacity cannot be increased once it is laid. C. It is difficult to make security arrangements for pipelines. D. Underground pipelines cannot be easily repaired and detection of leakage is also difficult. Major Pipelines of India 1. Nehakati Anunmati Barani Pipeline This is the first pipeline of the country constructed by oil for transporting crude oil from Nehakati oil field in Assam to Barani in Bihar via Anunmati. It is now extended to Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. 2. Bombay High Mumbai and Kulshwar Coily Pipeline this line connects the oil fields of Mumbai High and Gujarat with oil refinery at Koyali. It provides facilities for transporting crude oil and natural gas. 3. Salaya Koyali Mathaura Pipeline This has been laid down from Salaya to Koyali and Mathaura via Viramgram to supply crude oil to the extended Koyali and Mathaura refinery. It has an offshore terminal for imported crude oil. Now it has been further extended to Punapit and Jalinder. 4. Hajira by Japur Jagdish per gas pipeline. This has been constructed by Gas Authority of India to transport gas. It connects Hajira in Maharashtra to by Japur in M.P and Jagdishpur in UP. It carries 18 million cubic meters of gas every day to three powerhouses of Gujarat, Rajasthan and UP and to six fertilizer plants. This is the world's largest underground pipeline and brought economic boost to economy of Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. 5. Jam Nagaloni LPG Pipeline this has been constructed by Gas Authority of India connecting Jam Nagar in Gujarat to Loni near Delhi. This is the longest pipeline of the world. This is the first time that cross-country pipeline has been used to transport LPG adding to availability of supplies, safety in transportation and wider distribution. Issue of Pipeline Safety Aging infrastructure, lack of safety standards, and weak oversight and enforcement are the key elements leading to pipeline accidents. The following are the recommendations for improved pipeline safety and accountability. 1. Prevent pipeline disasters. Require better monitoring. A. 
require regular integrity testing of pipelines. B. Require better training and oversight of staff. C. Require pipeline companies to provide pipeline mapping data with the possible exception of gathering lines. Require safer pipelines. A. Require double walled pipelines, especially in high consequence areas. B. Require state of the art leak detection system and automatic shut off valves. C. Dig up and inspect pipelines more than 20 years old. D. Require setbacks of at least 1,000 feet for high risk areas for pipelines larger than 8 inches. 2. Hold pipeline companies responsible for accidents. A. Establish mandatory fines. B. Require strict and thorough reporting. As India is entering an agreement with Tajikistan and Iran for the supply of natural gas, so agenda of pipeline safety comes at forefront. Effect of Pipelines on Economy it provides easy transportation of petroleum products from refineries to consumer market maintaining a balance between demand and supply, thus keeping the cost of petroleum products at desired point. It helps in transfer of petroleum products to fertilizer plants thus affects the agricultural production of the country. LPG is now transferred by pipelines thus decreasing the transportation cost and making it easily available to the masses. Refineries can be set up at far distance from the raw material source thus helps in reducing regional disparity.